Hey Megalithomaniacs, how are you doing? We're here at Stonehenge on the summer solstice night time, waiting for the sunrise to occur. This is on June the 20th, 2024, going into the 21st. Over there we have the moon, which is also earlier, it rose and it marks the 18.6, or very close to it, the most fullest moon that we have near this great moon cycle, this Metonic cycle, which is also recorded at Kalanese. But we're gonna go into the stones, we're gonna hang out with some druids and see what activities are going on here. So let's go and check it out. We made our way to the Giant's Dance, also known as Stonehenge. And I'm gonna show you around, just so you know what it's like to be here on the summer solstice it's quite spectacular whether you come here just as a kind of hippie or pagan or just a civilian or megalithomaniac and you can actually enjoy stonehenge get inside the stones it's all lit up really beautifully uh, with strange blue lights and fairy lights and stuff like that and they can even get you know cheese on toast here as well just over there and burgers and pizza it's well worth coming it's a very family vibe there's no alcohol no drinking no drugs allowed it's all kind of quite relaxed and there's not many people here you know it's really not many. there's only a few thousand here maybe five six thousand usually there's ten twenty thousand even where it really peaked and uh yeah so let's get in let's have a look around it's night time now but you can actually get in from 7 p.m so you can actually observe the sunset this is the official entrance to Stonehenge. This is the way you're supposed to come in. And you walk along here behind me and you go that way towards the stones. I come in a different way because I'm local. So just behind me here is the heel stone, the one that orients to the summer solstice sunrise and the winter solstice sunset. In a few hours, the sun is gonna rise in that direction and the light will extend to this stone with the shadow going into the main circle itself. So it's pretty impressive. And there could have been two here, one on either side. And that's where the sun rises over in that direction there. And then it illuminates the great heel stone whose shadow then points towards going through the outer trilithons of the main stone circle. Something that Terence Meaden has analyzed and found that it's like a male shard, like a phallic symbol penetrating the feminine elements of the stone circle itself, the openings, the trilithons. So it's fascinating kind of symbology here. Also, we have the moon. Look at that. So we have the moon up there in the sky, which rose just before sunrise. You couldn't really see it very well, but tomorrow night it rises and it's going to be a big moon. It's going to be very close to the full moon. And this is the closest full moon to the Metonic 18.6 year cycle, which is recorded more in detail at Kalanish in the Outer Hebrides. So you've got the moon kind of illuminating at the back of Stonehenge. It's actually moving as you see it rising slightly between those stones. Yeah, here we go, party time. Hello, Hugh, it's lovely to see you here again. Summer solstice at Stonehenge uh, on the day before the southernmost moonrise that can ever possibly happen in the 18.61 year regression of the lunar load cycle. And we just had a couple of hours ago a moon rising in the right place along the long side of the station stone rectangle. And it's currently in the south part of the sky, really low, which is marvellous. But um, you tend to like me to come up with some stuff. So I'll, come, I'll give you some stuff. I was watching Terence's lecture at Megalithomania and I noticed when he was showing the shadow of Stone 11 that crosses Stone 40 and he was pointing that out as the calendrical significance and the recumbent receiver of the shadow in his usual way that he'd overlooked something. The shadow of Stone 11 actually goes beyond Stone 40, runs across the back of the monument and exactly intersects with Station Stone 93 at the winter solstice sunrise. And I mailed Terry and I said, look, have you noticed this? And he went, no. I said, I think this is significant because if 11 was, it's the stumpy stone, it's half the height and half the width, I'm never quite sure why. But if it was the normal width of the station, of all the other stones around here, that shadow would be too wide and would completely engulf the station stone. And if it was taller, 
its shadow would be much more pronounced and run up over the bank. So I think we've got a possible explanation for why 11 is that shape and that position and it's using Station Stone 93 as the winter solstice shadow receiver which ties in with Terry's calendrical idea. Needs more work doing on this, I've got to do some measurements but I think I'm on a new quest to track down something else. Which is always fun, 40 years of researching Stonehenge and I'm always learning something new. Happy Solstice, Simon. Happy Solstice, you. Simon Banton here, getting inundated by fans. Look at this. They can't get enough of him. Oh yeah, there they are. Amazing. And just behind us there in the sky, we can actually see the moon. Look at that. So I was just talking to Simon about the moon and, uh, and about how we're at that point of the extreme southerly point of the 18.6 year cycle. So that's pretty impressive. And then we have the moon there behind us. We have all his adoring fans. And for those interested, Simon Banton has given a lecture on the 2nd of July in Salisbury. I'll put the details below, which I'm going to be going to. Check out the link to that below. And uh, yeah, it's all happening at Stonehenge. Uh, we come round to the other side of it now. I wanted to show you a couple of things. We've got the striations on the stone just behind me there. But I think the most impressive thing I've seen so far are these bright colours. It's like a disco here tonight. So uh, yeah, it's all happening. I mean, there's no electronic music allowed. There's no like um, anything artificial like that, but they allow people to drum, unfortunately. You know, so there's tons of drummers making tons of noise. I wish they'd just shut up, to be honest with you. And we could have a bit of like silence, like a bit of meditation or something. But it's never going to happen, unfortunately. So uh, we'll just have to deal with it. And um, there's actually a guy who plays the bagpipes here sometimes. I haven't seen him yet, but you can hear it when he's here for sure. Don't often see Stonehenge lit up like a disco. In fact, I did see that when I Carl Cox and Paul Oakenfold were DJing here once on a special private evening, which I jumped the fence for. I'll put a link to the video below. So it's this stone here, which has the very strange striations all over it. You can see that close up there. You see all the little details, the way it's been, looks like it's been scooped. I'm disturbing people who are trying to sleep here. It's kind of bizarre but there you go and there's the giant stone over there but yeah so that is the striations on one of the stones here which I've actually written about and featured in some of my videos you can see down the edge there that's all the very strange markings are <laughs> That's the half height stone that is not tall enough and not wide enough, so it's marking a different thing. And it's on this, this is the stone that Simon Banton talks about where the shadow on the winter solstice hits one of the station stones, so it forms a shadow alignment. And there we have the moon behind it. So that's the area you kind of come in from over there to the west. And then as you walk in, you can get pizza, burgers, cheese on toast, and Angus, which is steaks and burgers. And over there, we have the Harry Krishnas. And then further over there, we have a load of big stones in a field. Stonehenge. So as you can see, it's pretty epic to be here for the summer solstice at night. Now, obviously it's pretty dark. They've got strange kind of almost UV lighting here, which I kind of like, but it's amazing. There's not many people here. It feels like there's probably about 6,000 people. Usually there's 10, sometimes 20,000 people. And I was going to say 20,000 hardcore members from the Warriors, but I didn't. 
and yes, it's amazing. So I've not seen any druids around. I'm always uh, hunting druids on the lookout for druids, but they did a thing earlier. They'll do more during the sunrise. And yeah, it's a pretty amazing vibe. They, they banned alcohol from here a few years ago to keep the good vibe, uh, which is kind of a good thing. It's more family kind of vibe. Anyone can come. They're, they're quite relaxed. As long as people don't damage the stones, which happened a couple of days ago, actually, the orange paint situation. Um, they kind of let people do what they want, pretty much. There's lots of drumming, there's lots of like incense, and different activities and ceremonies. So yes, yeah, well worth checking out. If you can come here around the 20th, 21st of June, you get inside the stones like I'm doing here. I'm just outside the main circle now. I'm heading back towards the heel stone. But yeah, it gives you a good sense of what it's like here. It's, uh, it's not too wild like you might think. Like it's probably much wilder when they were doing the druidic ceremonies back here a few thousand years ago. Light's gonna start coming up soon. I've got a really special treat for you. We're gonna have a look at the solstice sunrise before all the crowds were here from this morning and this coming morning where the crowd's here. So we're gonna get a mix of the summer solstice sunrise, the special event that's linked with Stonehenge without any people and with the people, with thousands of people here. So check out this footage, it's amazing. And the sun rises along the whole avenue that heads northeast from the site. And it perfectly works with the winter solstice sunset exactly opposite at the other time of the year. So it's like straight across, like a cross going through it. And also at this point as well, we're having all these effects with the moon and the extreme points of the lunar standstill. So it's a very special time that these ancient megalith builders here and in Kalanish and other places were marking these solstices. The oldest winter solstice we know is from Karahan Tepe, a discovery myself and JJ Ainsworth made some time ago. But yeah, anyway, let's just, we're gonna finish up here soon as the sun starts rising and we're gonna see something quite remarkable 